Okay, so we are in Photoshop right now. Okay, this is my Photoshop account. I have stuff saved on the cloud. And when I go ahead, open this, I'm going to go ahead, show you guys roughly how long it takes to open. It could depend on the internet. It does depend on your internet size and file size of it as well. Now, what you guys are seeing is, I mean, technically it's a little bit watered down, okay? But essentially most of the features that you would need is here. I, or rather are here, I have an Apple Pencil. I'm just going to show you guys by doing that there, then pull it here. So that might make stuff a little bit easier. I haven't decided if it does or not. Now, what's real cool about this is actually in addition to everything else we can do quick select we can do object selection but that's not the cool part the cool part here is that that's actually oh i actually didn't mean to hit object selection i thought that was something else my bad Rectangle, okay, deselect. Okay, let's go ahead and pinch it to zoom and put that there. And then get that here. Now, the cool thing about this is it has generative AI. So we can say we want a duck here, for example, we can just tell it to generate a duck and it will randomly, hopefully randomly generate a good duck. Okay, it's a duck, it is a duck, that is, I assume a duck still? Okay, let's see. Matching E and we I environment. Okay. Duck matching environment. Okay, so oh okay. I'll be honest. Now that I think about it, it's not bad. Like, in theory, I could imagine, like, this duck walking towards this character type thing. It's it's actually a bit crazy if you think about it. Now we are going to, I guess, add some water. Let's see. Um, uh, hello, uh, Water. This time we aren't going to put matching environment and just see if it can pick up on matching the environment its own. Okay, that is mm. cartoon, but. I think I'm giving it a matching yep. 
environment. I think I'm giving it a pretty hard task now, if I'm being honest, because, yeah, I'm asking a lot. I'm asking it to actually, you know what? The second one doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure if it's exactly water or not, but honestly, not bad. Because that's it before, and this is it after. Actually, you know what? I think I did like the before better. So when I Get rid of that and just keep that there, I guess. But yeah, that's actually pretty cool because this, this duck is not in the original. Look, I'll show you guys real quick. We could tap on there. No duck. Duck. And yeah, actually works pretty well, overall, and then if we wanted to save, we could just um, save it there, publish and export, quick export, live stream, which I didn't know was an option. And yeah, we're just having fun with the home dock and inserted in, this game is actually called Soul frame. If you are interested, I actually have a whole other channel where I did just talk a lot about this game today. And this actually is the thumbnail, minus, minus the duck, of course. Minus the duck. But yeah, definitely let me know what you guys think of this, okay? I think that it is an interesting way about, I guess I could say. It's interesting because of the fact that generative feel works on the iPad version of Photoshop. So, I mean, you can Basically, you'll have an, let's say uh, you're on the go, you have an idea, like you want there to be the random sun somewhere. You can just hit generate and then it will just generate for you what you need there. Of course, this would look more realistic, but then we would have to change it. So shadows and stuff. So let's get rid of that personally. But you know, it's just a thought. And then like I said, I have that Apple Pencil, so it makes it a little bit easier to click on stuff. But fun fact, when I'm typing stuff, I like to actually put the Apple Pencil down because of the fact that if you have that Apple Pencil open while you're clicked in the text box, it will assume that you want to use the Apple Pencil to write something in the text. And, you know, if we don't want something, of course, we can come over here. Okay, well, first we have to change that. And then we come over here. And then say we want the eraser tool. Okay, and we have the options for the eraser tool right here. Basically, how round, the flow, smoothing, you know, all that jazz. 
No, we do not want to flatten the image. But see, there we go. We're slowly but surely erasing stuff. But I do not think that I want to continue to erase stuff. So we are going to undo that with a simple button press like that. Just undo. Plain and simple, we can select what brush we want and, you know, the brush, of course, will let us create stuff. Remember, this is technically a duck that the generator fill did. That's why we aren't able to do that like that. And then, you know, if we want to undo it, we just hit undo. And that plain and simple. Now, since we have the Apple Pencil here, we can actually do uh, I don't know what I would try. Oh, okay, wait, I actually didn't know what I'm gonna try. Okay. A cheeky box. Another cheeky box. Connect both of these. Connect both of these. And connect both of these. And then connect both of these. Whoops, that one was. That went a bit wonky. Okay. I will try one more time, guys. Okay, I think this is as good as we're going to get. This is actually one of the very first things I learned how to do. Of course, if I wasn't writing on a screen with a Apple Pencil, I feel like I'd be able to do better. Wait, what did happen? Did the pencil do something? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and erase all of that. You know, just backspacing it, the easier to go ahead. I really do like the fact that I can just change it however I need. So that is an upside to, you know, Photoshop on the iPad. Now, I think I did one of these videos a while back. But I am honestly glad I revisited it because there are certain things I feel like are a lot better now that Photoshop has access to, frankly, more features than they used to, if I'm being perfectly honest. I mean, we can remove background, magic wand, quick select, object select, lasso. Remove background, it definitely knew it wasn't originally there. We aren't going to do it on the duck, though. We are going to try it on his. Okay, wow. Well. And hide that. And then remove background. Okay, remove background. Let's see how it works. Okay. It actually did remove the background, just how we asked. Yeah, it actually did it very good too. I'm using uh, M1. In case you're curious, M1 version of the iPad, and this is just the latest version of Photoshop that I have on the iPad. Definitely let me know if you use an iPad, if this makes you reconsider using Photoshop on the iPad, 
Or you still like, eh, no, Photoshop on the iPad isn't for me. In which case, I would totally understand. But Photoshop for iPad comes with, I believe, I mean, there could be exceptions, but a lot of the packages you can buy for Photoshop on the Adobe thing usually come with Photoshop for iPad. So if you have an iPad, there's no harm in giving it a try. What case scenario, you don't like it and just stick to the desktop version of Photoshop. Now, before any of you guys ask, I have no clue if there's an Android equivalent of Photoshop. If you want me to check on that in the future and whatnot, definitely let me know and I'll see what I can do, but no promises. And with that said, I will catch you guys in the future. Later.